Mail bag time. There's two things in this package. Let's get into it. Right, first thing. I think I actually know what's in here already, based on the name I had on it. So this is a Batronix EEPROM programmer. Now this is actually an older unit. I've had this for a while. It's actually my own unit. Now the reason this has been posted to me is because I lent it out to someone on the EVblog forum. They were trying to repair some test gear and they're in New Zealand. And someone else I know, uh, Rob from Tapaka Technologies, this is the Signet distributor. He was going down there to see him actually. So I lent him this and it's the BX32. It's an older model. He needed an EEPROM programmer to back up some EEPROMs and stuff from his unit. So I sent it down. Cool. I heard this. It's giving me some free EEPROMs. Or some PROMs. Bob had told me that the person which this was being lent to had chucked in some free problems for me, so it was nice of him. Thank you much. I didn't ask for anything, but that was a nice gesture. What's that say? CXK58257P-10L, which I believe are very similar compatibility to the EEPROM. Um, I think there's a slight differences there from what the person was saying. Here's an EEPROM over here as well. What's that one there? Can't see the sticker over it. And so the actual programmer is only this big, that's it. So you've got that. USB powered. Now I've had this for a while, oh, probably I don't know, maybe five years maybe, it could be that long. I haven't used it that much but I have used it and it's, I've used this to do things like back up the EEPROMs from the Datron multimeters and things like that and some of those are actually online as well. I've shared them like KO4BB website and XDevs and EVBlog forum places like that. I've also got to do the Datron uh, 1082 multimeter. I've got to pull the EEPROMs out of that and now I've got this thing back I can do that and it also has a Software CD in the bottom here. But this is okay, I mean, it, it kind of works on Mac, which is why I bought it because it's advertised as having Macintosh software, you know, Apple software. I'm not called, not called Macintosh anymore, is it? That's why I got it because it's advertised as working on a Mac, and it turns out the software is actually inferior. It's a beta version of the software, and they never actually finished making the software, so it's buggy. Sometimes it will work, sometimes it will just crash in the middle of doing anything. The PC software is fine, but the Mac version is just... It's, a, it's just never been finished. I mean, it's 99% there, but it's got bugs. And sometimes I have to like, restart the computer to get the software to work again, that sort of stuff. But it works well enough on Mac for me to get by, you know, without having to use a PC to do this stuff. So, I've had this program for a while, anyway. So, it's a nice program. It's nicely designed, and it's got heaps of devices it supports. There are updates as well for the software and they add more devices from time to time that sort of stuff so this is from Batronix which is a European company yeah I mean I do kind of recommend it but not for Mac Macs are still a problem I don't know why just bloody write the software people so this package is from PCBWay I ordered some PCBs so these are at no cost to me this is a sponsorship from PCBWay which is great to have their support. They do all sorts of little projects and things I can share with you guys. It doesn't cost me anything. It's absolutely brilliant. So I highly recommend you go and check out PCWay. There'll be links down below. And in the final video, I'm actually going to do this thing. Oh, give me a bunch of stuff. Excellent. Oh, even, even better. <laughs> Loads of stuff. So, just like they sent me another shirt. Nice, pretty shit. Got some more stickers, some more rulers. I've got loads of rulers now, loads and loads of them. Handy things to have though, especially for the component markings and footprints and stuff. I'll give you a little badge thing. It's PCB Way 7th anniversary badge. Also, it's got some EDs in there, light up, because it goes around the outside or something. And this is what I actually got is these PCBs here. So, I'll be doing a proper video on this and about this project. So, this project is something I want to do. It's, these are actually my design of PCB, somebody else designed these, and I've just had my own versions made. So they've changed their packaging, it used to be like vacuum packed, and now they've seemed to have gone to these kinds of bags instead, which is interesting. I don't know why they've changed. But um, I've got two different kinds of PCB in here. So there's some in there, and there's some more in here. And um, I'll be doing a review video on this. So watch out for that coming up soon. I'm not going to go into too much detail now. But if you need any PCBs made, get a PCWay, recommend them. I've always had really good results from PCWay. Not just because they're a sponsor and they help support my channel and help me to produce content for you. But 
even the, the boards I've had from them have always been good. I've never had any problems with their boards. Right, last thing, but this has got two packages in here, so we'll see how this goes. Looking slightly squashed. I'm not sure if they're two parts of the same thing or not. Let's have a look at this damaged one first, see what's going on here. Instructions? Yeah, don't need them. Don't need instructions. A oh, man, damn it. Okay, maybe sometimes I do need instructions. <coughs> so this is a LED magnifier with a big bracket. The reason I got this is because well, I've noticed my eyesight's been getting worse in the past year. I used to have really good eyesight, like on eye charts, I could read the bottom line of the eye chart, that kind of thing. Really good eyesight. And the past year, I've noticed it deteriorating and finding harder to read parts and like refocusing and stuff like that. So, you know, it's it's on the way out. I thought, well, I'll get myself a little magnifiers. I mean, I've got okay, microscopes, stuff like that. I did actually buy like a handheld magnifier some time ago, a few years ago. You're yeah, not going to find it now, no. Anyway, so I thought I'd get myself one of these things. So a little, little articulating arm. It's got some adjustments on here, adjust the tensions. Just going to pivot around. LED light. Just like it's USB powered and it's got the control on it as well. It's always the other way up, isn't it? So power. That's drawing 1.5 amps. Pretty bright. Yeah, I mean that's working all right. As you get, you know, you get distortions and stuff around the edges, but that's normal, would not it, for magnifiers? Some buttons here, which change. So it's also got two different colours of LEDs, and you can change the colour mix by pressing this button here, which is like a swapping button. So you can do looks like five thousand and maybe. Might be four thousand. I'm sure that's really. It might be six thousand there, maybe four thousand there or something like that. Also got a brightness adjustment, a little dimming, dimming control. You can hold it and it goes up and down. Cool. Yeah, so I could probably mount this somewhere and swing it into view when I need it. That looks alright. It's doing say one and a half amps like that with both colours on. There'll be links down below for this. And the other box. I think I know what's in here too, because uh, I did order more than one thing from the same person. This is another light, very similar. Not exactly the same, still a mounting system, you know. So it's a very similar thing, pivoting arm, turnable head, right, it's got a control in there as well, same functions, but this has got a solid base instead. Now the reason I've got two is because my wife is doing some craft work kind of thing, she's doing um, cross stitch, one of her current hobbies, and she's actually finishing one for a friend of hers who, uh, well, kind of, it's more for the friend of hers family. Because unfortunately, a friend of hers, which is also kind of a friend of mine too, um, she passed away earlier in the year and left this thing unfinished. And so, the wife has um, offered to finish it for him and actually have it completed for the family, you know. So, she's doing that. But trying to do it is, well, it's really fine work. And I do have a magnifier over there already, which is using, but it's a bit haphazard. It's sort of clamped on using clamps and stuff, and it's just like moves around and yeah, it's not particularly good. So I've got a couple of different versions. One with the base, one without the base, which has got that bracket, the clamp on bracket. Um, and she'll end up with one of these. So let's try this to turn this thing on. That's doing one amp right now. Let's change colours. One amp still. Do 1.1 amps that way. So this lock is actually less powerful. So that's probably 4,000. That's probably 6,000, that's probably 5,000 because it's a mixture of both. 
but again, articulating arm. So I thought, well, this might be good for like a, as a desk mount. I don't know how good it's going to be at length. Yeah, see, at length it's just like near. No, nah. <laughs> you have to be certainly, you have to be kind of close to it, otherwise this is going to fall over. Because the base of that's got some weight to it. It's not actually heavy enough. You know, put it out, it's going to fall over. So it's not a particularly good base on this one. But if you're just doing close stuff, I suppose it's right. Yeah, it kind of needs a better base. It needs more weight to it. This kind of wants to fall over. But the magnifier is the main thing I was looking at. I, mean, I do actually have other mounts and other brackets so I can put these things onto because these are kind of standard. I've got all sorts of things around which have got these kinds of clamp on bases to them, like the other first unit had. And I could probably just put another clamp on mount and actually not use this base at all. Or maybe I could pull it apart and put some weights in it. Just pull it apart. Quickly, I've got to do a podcast soon. Let's undo the last screw. There you go. Um, that's what's inside it. It's basically a block of concrete. <laughs> that's fine. It's exactly what it's meant to be. Yeah, okay. So I can't really add anything to this to make it heavier, which is a shame. At least not on the inside. Oh well. Subscribe, click the bell icon, thumbs up if you liked it. I'll catch you later. Bye.